from the Emerald Cup. That's true. Well, speaking of the Emerald Cup, why yes. don't we get into some of our Emerald Cup coverage? Uh, why don't we? Thanks. It was so amazing. It was a, well, it, you know, the Emerald Cup was definitely the pinnacle of the year for us. It did bring uh, all 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 the full, spectrum the full spectrum of the cannabis culture together. It did. It was uh, it highlighted highlighted the uh, recreational adult use uh, joy joyousness of the corporate cannabis. Uh, and craft cannabis. This was really more of a craft cannabis. Uh, it was, cl- was certainly cloaked in a craft cannabis event. It came from its roots are with craft cannabis. From I think the, it's trying to hang on to it as much as possible. Uh, but boy, let me tell you. Ooh, it's a bridge. It's a transitional uh, time, guys. Although there was no men booth that I saw. No, no, <laughs> there was no uh, big corporate. Um, bugaboo there wasn't and and i really it's it's a tricky time because people are trying to come on board with with compliance and legal and all the things and but again it the restrictions and all the barriers make it really uh hard for people without money to play or to get medicine yeah uh, because of the overtaxation and the um, just the cost of doing business, when you can't write off your business expenses, right. you're going to have to pass those expenses on to somebody, and that's going to be, um, you know, in the uh, whoever's buying prices, right? You know, there was a uh, the most controversial article this week that I tweeted out was this article uh, written um, in the Root, which uh, basically talked about a Los Angeles Times article that that how the California experiment was failed in uh producing the tax revenue and uh that they expected and and that um you know the prices are ridiculous and and that other states you can you know there's it so what you have is a uh brand new uh legal system uh-huh. uh trying to make money um <laughs> yeah i mean if you look at oklahoma Logo Oklahoma, this is a great example of, of, of how you go from a black market to a, a non-black market. They legal, they legalize medical cannabis. They start issuing a license in August. And there's how many stores? Dispensaries in Oklahoma? 798 like or something. 795. Is it, six, is it 795? It's like close to It's a to, huge yeah. number. There's hundreds, there's over seven, you know, mm-hmm. 750 or some stores, dispensaries that are already up and running. Where did all those, where did all those operators like come overnight. from? Overnight. Overnight. <laughs> so, um, you're taking this, uh, black market, uh, unregulated, illegal market and shoving it into a uh, tax and regulate system that everybody's freaking out over. Because literally everybody is freaking. There's people freaking out this week about new about new cannabis stores coming in too close to the children. What are we going to do about the children? Give them some weed, and then maybe they'll be better. Hey, hey, but, hey. Uh, hey, 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 hey! Not the children. Uh, not the children. Whatever. You some do. children when they need it. Hello. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who doesn't really need a twenty to one when it comes right down to it? Come on. Quite it frankly. nourishes the endocannabinoid from, system from pet to uh, you know. Uh, anybody, uh, but um, you got to have a little of that THC in there. Yeah. So um, the the Emerald Cup was probably the best. Uh, uh, I mean, we got a lot, we 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 got a lot of information, met a lot of great people, planned our you know have a have a have a scalata for our entire 2019 season <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we're going to implement uh, starting in in January, uh, including a podcast. Stay tuned for the podcast. That's right. We're we'll gonna, have a podcast too. It may become a podcast. We're, we're going backwards, like with cannabis it, research. You know, it's uh, <laughs> we're doing it backwards. We're going to do a podcast now. Bottom up. Bottom up. <clears throat> but uh, so we this week they've been dropping these panels from the Emerald Cup uh, over the last week, and some of the absolutely some of the best panels uh, out there with regards to uh, cannabis and as medicine, uh, as a spiritual practice as um uh, you know what's going on in california because california seems to be the model for better or worse of what's yeah. going to happen around the country as is with many that. other things we're going to fix that um uh, so uh yeah you know we're we, and we so we got some work to do in california and this is really this panel they dropped today uh which was cannabis a matter of life and death uh probably has the most important information 
uh, with regards to uh, adult use uh, laws and recreational cannabis that's being implemented or that will be implemented in the next coming years. In 2019 and 2020, we might reach that halfway point with adult use. Maybe not. But there's probably going to, we're going to double it. We're going to double the states uh, to 20. We almost half. Probably by 2020 with adult use, if it doesn't pop federally, which it may not, it may at the cannibal, at the, at the, at the, at, at the courts, who knows? Uh, but um, we're going to see a lot of adult use and laws passing in the next two years. And they're all going to be looking at California and these other states that have already done it. California being the biggest market. So let's take a listen to a couple of folks that were on this panel. This was uh, Cannabis, a Matter of Life and Death. Uh, we're going to listen to a lot of it. We're going to uh, jump in and talk about it in, at certain points. Uh, but there's some amazing critical information. Who's on this panel? Um, the moderator is Ellen Comp, who um, is a force uh, in, her, in her own right. Um, she is talking to... Patrick Seifert. She's the vice president of California Normal. Oh, I'm sorry. Vice president of California Normal. Thank you, Chella. Thank you very much. To be more specific. To be more specific. Uh -huh. Vice president of California Normal. And a historian who wrote Normal. that token women book that I got. Ah. She signed it for us when uh, we were at the Emerald Cup. Oh, well, oh really? Wait, wait. Yes. You, so you met Ellen Kump? Yes. At the Emerald Cup? He doesn't listen, you guys. Oh, no, I'm doing this On for dramatic Sundays, effect for the show. It's impossible to talk to him. <laughs> I have to like, I have to, I think I have to type to you if I no, want you to I, talk to me. I'm a little distracted on Sundays. <laughs> and we went for street brunch this morning on top of it. <laughs> so, uh, Ellen Comp, the vice president of California Normal, the moderator and force uh, of her own in cannabis legalization, which we will, who we, who we will hear from. Uh, the speakers, Patrick Seifert of uh, 22 Too Many. Uh, which is an organization for veterans, referring to the number of veterans that commit suicide every day. Um, and Sean Kiernan, the head of, leader of uh, Weed for Warriors Project, which we follow not as much as we should on this show, and we hope to do that more in 2019. But they're probably one of the most effective veteran cannabis uh, groups that are out there getting cannabis to veterans uh, that need it uh, to survive. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. This panel is fabulous. Let's take a look, listen, uh, and we're going to jump right into it. Oh, also on this panel, I'm sorry. I, there was one oh, more yeah. person. Sweet leaf, Joe, uh, sweet leaf, Joe, sweet leaf, Joe, um, the two veteran uh, organizations and sweet leaf, Joe, who is uh, uh, the head and force behind sweet leaf collective, which provides tons and have provided tons literally tons. of cannabis to uh critical dying patients uh throughout northern california for um, free for free yeah aids um, and cancer patients and they are going to be having their very last giveaway on january 9th which is the last day that the collective cannabis the cannabis collective medical model the non-profit model in California goes away. So let's uh let's listen to Sweet Leaf, <laughs> Joe, Sean, Ellen, and Patrick. This is Reefer Revolution Live, and these guys are the revolution. As are you. As well, are so we. We're in and a situation you. where the life saving medicines is getting people off more dangerous drugs which are leading to overdose death, suicide is not generally recommended by a general practitioner, and it's not permitted to be recommended by a Veterans Administration doctor. It's not paid for by health insurance, and it's not provided by the VA either. So what happens to those patients who can't afford their medicine if they, if they are unable to get it? What, what happens to them? The first thing is they're forced into the black market right. from, from, that, from, from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, black market's one, one way, and, and the irony of there is your chances of having dirty meds have gone up substantially with the yeah. legal market. So we're now more likely to be poisoning the poor, which is really this is. I mean, this is, this is an American story, if we want to be honest with you. This is 100% America. 
It is build up a system that serves the privileged because they have the money and all you people like, screw everybody else. And so they're really left to fend for themselves. So to me, this is just an American success story. And that is we don't care about people who don't have money in this country. Right. Yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, um, you know, our patients do not have disposable incomes when they do not have access to this medicine, they, they have to go without. And just this week, I was checking in with patients, just updating our records and calling people. And, you know, there's a bunch of phone numbers that are disconnected now. And I'm not sure if those people are still alive. And there was one phone call I made, and that person had passed. And that's what that's what we're looking at, that's what we're dealing with, and because of the restricted access to the cannabis, it is directly affecting people's health. So, <clears throat> these compassion programs have been running, but now, in California, we're up against the new regulations from Prop 64, which require taxation at several levels of the cannabis, 15% um, excise tax right off the bat, um, sales tax, which patients with an ID card are, are exempt from, but not others, cultivation tax, and then, of course, all the regulatory costs. So, and um, I, I know Washington has had struggles, too, with, you know, keeping the, rec the medical market alive when recreational came in. So what has been the impact of the current laws, state laws, on these compassion programs. You know, I, I, I look at some of my chapter leaders, I think it's made their job harder. Um, you know, listen, if we go to the events, the number of people selling has gone down, right? Mm. The licensed market has left us behind. So that leaves many of our chapters relying under the co-op model that goes away here in January, right? Yeah. And, you know, the reality is we have to make a decision. What are we going to do? Um, so it's forgotten us, and so each of us have to adapt to the new market. So stuff like you said, SB 29, that's now SB 34. We've got to push forward to get the taxes. So there's an avenue within the tracker trace system to let people donate. Now we get a lot. We go around here and go, are you, are you guys have a license yet? Get a license so we can work with you. Okay, where's the hundreds of thousands of dollars for that? Um, you know, what is it you want to do in, in terms of uh, limiting, you know, what do I tell these vets? To stay off the black market? No, I'm not going to say that. Um, and so all you're doing is criminalizing a whole group of people. You're making their lives more dangerous. You're making their lives more, you know, suff there's more suffering. All for what? For taxes and profits. So as I said, it's the American way. So there's a, a couple things that I'm thinking about with this. Um, you know, the big issue with Proposition 64 is that nonprofits and compassion programs were not brought to the table when this bill was authored. Uh, the biggest issue for me with this new bill is that there is no distinction between non-commercial cannabis and commercial cannabis. And so all transactions are seen as commercial. What that means is that if we're giving away cannabis, we're being taxed like we're selling it. So we actually have to pay to give it away. And I'm just not sure where that money is going to come from. Um, another issue is like you were talking about with the, the excise taxes and, and all those. So the cultivation tax is an interesting thing. It's not based on a percentage. Um, it's around $150 a pound. So when farmers are donating to us, they're donating to us smalls. They're donating to us things that aren't as sellable in the regulated marketplace. These things have a lesser value. So when you look at it, like that pound might only be worth two to $400, but that you have to pay the same cultivation tax on that, like a pound that's worth, worth $2,000. So there's a lot of things where we have the cards stacked against us and it's just making things really, really, really difficult, which is why, you know, last year we worked really hard on SB 829, and this upcoming year we're going to be working very hard on SB 34 
to get all of these taxes removed to compassionate cannabis. So, you know, so, so no one has to pay to give the cannabis away. It's just, it's really a, a backwards kind of system. And I, I definitely believe it's an oversight and it's because we didn't have our voice at the table with this legislation. And so we're just trying to rectify that situation. I would just take a different perspective having been involved. I think it wasn't an oversight. Um, and I think, I absolutely don't think it's a, <laughs> Battle it out. I, I think this was 100% designed like this by people who only cared about taxes and, and profits. But that's just my two cents. And uh, I have a shitload of emails. We should download like WikiLeaks to expose it all. But that's all I'm going to say. Cool. So in Washington State, medical's all but, but dead. There's more shops without medical than, than have medical. No. You walk in there and into many shops in Washington State, and they'll have one or two medical products. Um, so to be on the uh, medical patient in Washington State, um, you have to be on the registry if you want to take part in the free med program. And only one dispensary, um, Have a Heart, in the entire state of Washington is doing this program that every dispensary could, could do if they wanted. So I can send veterans to have a heart and they'll get um, outdated meds that are past the expiration date or whatever. It doesn't matter to us, it's free meds. You know, we'll take whatever's given to us. So that's one way of getting free meds legally to veterans in Washington state. And that's just a, a tiny program right now that really needs to, to pick up. Um, other than that, you know, don't, I hope it doesn't happen in California, but they made it um, to where medical, uh, retail's just as good as medical. So why, why can't medical patients get what they need from the retail market? So, um, and that's just, that's just not true. So one of the benefits, and the only reason I decided to go on the registry was because I can grow 15 plants, if you go to the right doctor to, to write that on your, on your prescription. So um, that's a huge bonus. Um, I don't know how, what, what your guys' laws here, if you are on the registry. I mean, the, you know, the issue here has been the local ordinances that have limited cultivation rights. And still, you can grow what you need for your own medicine, but there are so many local ordinances that are limiting that, and many are limiting it to the six plants now that Prop 64 had six plants in it. So. And then there's a whole scare about being on the registry, you know? If you mm. want to you wanna be able to use cannabis, or do you want to have your rights taken away and owning a gun, you know? Gun rights. Because yeah. that's what you'll lose if you decide to go on a registry. I got one more thing with that. So, you know, the beginning of this year is when a lot of California Compassion Projects started coming together to try to address the situation. And one of the people that I was working with with Sweetleaf, um, she said, oh, well, why don't we look at Washington and Colorado? Like, what did they do when everything went legal? And I thought, well, that's a great idea. Then we got online and we started looking around and it's just like you were talking about. Medical went away with recreational. And so all of a sudden, compassion is, is medical. And so all of a sudden, this group of people that, that are low income, terminally ill, PTSD veterans, people who can't afford this medicine, they're just left out in the cold. And what we see in California, I feel like we're really lucky here, is that we have a very strong history of compassion. You know, we have Dennis Perone, who from the 80s was giving away cannabis to low-income AIDS patients in San Francisco. That's pretty much the footsteps that Sweetleaf has been following in. You know, we have Wham and Valerie Corral, who have been going since 1993. You know, we have Sweet Leaf, we've been going since 96. We are really steeped in compassion. The Proposition 215 was called the Compassionate Use Act. This whole industry started in compassion. And that's why I feel like we're really lucky here in California in this fight, you know, as opposed to Washington and Colorado, is that this is our history. We have a lot of activists who are very concerned about this issue, and we're not going to stop this fight until we have won. And we don't want to see what happened in those other states happen here. We cannot have these patients left out in the cold. I do not, I do not want these deaths on my shoulders. 
look to Washington State on how not to do it? I think it's important to talk about what I saw, which was a concerted national effort to legalize cannabis run by the political powers, Democratic Party, DPA, MPP, and I'm sorry, normal on a national level. And I talked to Keith Stroop, I talked to Ethan Edelman, and let me tell you, I, I'm sure there's a lot of fans in here. I was told, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. When I said, it looks like you're legalizing for the privileged, and you're telling the sick and disabled to go screw themselves. It was purely a political ploy nationally. It is, it, medical is going away in Washington. Medical is going away in Oregon. Medical is going away in California. It was designed like that. And so I think where Joe's talking about, we're raising enough stink that even people are going, yeah, this doesn't look good, right? Just on the face of it. But that's why we got to keep up this argument. We got to keep protesting. We got to get out in front of these people because they will forget about us as quickly as they acknowledge us. Whew. So, um, do you think in Washington, medical got subsumed because, I mean, now we were, we were having uh, recreational and medical licenses, and we still do, but a lot of people are only applying for recreational because they can't afford to apply for both licenses, right? Um, we erased medical and recreational designations in the supply chain because it was just too crazy to have like, oh, is this, does this plant look like a medical plant to you? Or, you know, does this, you know, and that didn't make sense, except for a few high potency medical products and stuff. Um, and I think the way to make the distinction is to uh, tax and price the medical market differently, uh, if possible. <laughs> Sean's the skin, cynic on the panel. Um, you know, like so a few jurisdictions have a lower rate of taxation for a medical patient, right, than another. But I know these are, these are kind of band-aids on the bigger gaping wounds. I, I just wanted to talk a, a minute about um, what Sean alluded to about the collective model going away January 9th, and that's something that hasn't really been talked about a lot. But just for historical, because I've been around since these days, Prop 215 actually is just like a one-page law. It didn't have any provision for any kind of collective association growing cannabis. I mean, you know, in, in general law, you might argue, you know, people have the right to collectively do things, but um, it, it just protected personal cultivation rights and, per, you know, personal use. Um, after that, there was big... Uh, meetings in Sacramento with all the stakeholders and the cops and everything, and immediately they wanted to know, you know, register us and know where everything was and, you know, all kinds of things. And we fought that off. And we did fight for a collective model, and this is what was in SB 420. We waited in, in the lobby until that number came up to name it that. Um, and it allowed, and actually, SB 420 was um, written in order to protect. Uh, collectives like the Women's Alliance for Mar Medical Marijuana, WAM, which basically all the patients co-owned all the plants, they, they worked the garden, they, they all, you know, harvested and everything together. And right away, as soon as it, well, even before it passed, even before Prop 215 passed, Dennis Perone had, you know, was, had his, cl his clubs and he was selling and giving it away. It, it, it was very much... Um, tied in with uh, AIDS activism and, you know, AIDS patients activating for their medicines of all kinds that they needed, ACT, et cetera. And so I agree with Joe that we really need to remember and honor that. We really did, you know, pressure Senator Weiner to introduce this bill, 829, because of, you know, I mean, he spoke at Dennis Perone's um, uh, memorial service, and I approached him after and said, well, we've got to make this a Dennis Prone compassion bill. You know, we've got to get this going. And um, so people know it did pass the um, legislature, but it was vetoed by Governor Brown, who thought for some reason that it, it was counter to Prop 64, or was, I'm sure worried about profits, <laughs> as they are. Um, but he will not be sitting in the governor's chair next year. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're happy that it introduced. I wanted to say, too, and it passed with bipartisan support, and I was in there when I watched two Republican members of a committee flip their vote because they had been lobbied so hard by the veterans. 
And they, one of them said, I'm wearing my 22 bracelet. So, yeah. Um, I forget which committee that was. Andy, do you remember? Uh, yeah. So, um, this has um, brought together a lot of people, you know, that need to work together to move it forward. Um, but in general, in a larger picture, I'm, I'm coming to a question. Um, we need to, um, I mean, obviously the answer is descheduling at the federal level, having it available, you know, insurance companies pay, having the VA actually have it available. In the meantime, the steps to that might be, um, there's some research bills in uh, Congress. Uh, Lou Correa from California introduced one of them. Um, what, what are some of the steps we can take towards, towards the answer? Is it SB 34? Is that going to protect the collective model that's going away? or, or what? Um, so yeah. I don't think that's going to protect the collective model. Um, we're going to have to operate within the regulated framework. And um, just to step back, uh, one thing I wanted to mention what you were when you were talking about SB 829, is that it passed with overwhelming support in the S state Senate and the state assembly. It was almost a 90% yes vote. That's kind of insane. Um, we had a whole bunch of Republicans that were supporting this because of the lobbying efforts of both Weed for Warriors, Sean and his guys, and then Ryan Miller from Operation EVAC. Like, these guys flipped. They changed these Republicans from their concept of we're voting, we're Republicans voting no on a cannabis issue to we're Republicans voting yes on a veterans issue. And that was very key. Um, so what I'm seeing for the short term future is regardless of whether we're talking about this as medical or rec, what we need is we need a nonprofit license. Like I don't care what industry it's in. We need to be able to distribute this medicine, whether we call it medicine or recreation or whatever, we know that it's helping people's endocannabinoid system. Like Dennis Perone said, all marijuana use is medical. We all have an endocannabinoid system and it helps our homeostasis whenever we're consuming cannabis. So we really need licensure for nonprofits. The other thing we need to do, so we need to get rid of taxes to non-commercial cannabis. That's step one. Step two is we need to give tax incentives to cannabis corporations that are participating in compassion. Now, if the federal government is not gonna let us be 501c3 and you can't get a tax break on your federal taxes, what about getting breaks on your California state taxes? The state could be doing that. Well, that so, bill has been reintroduced this year that would help with that. Well, 34 just, my understanding is Not that it only... Not 34, it's, a, it's, um, it's, it's a different bill. one? Uh, you know which one There's I mean. There's so many of them. Oh, yeah, about 60 right, last keep year. Track. Yeah, I haven't but, even... But, yeah, basically, we need to give a financial incentive to the industry so that we can practice compassion. And I believe phase one of this is protecting compassion, and that is getting rid of these taxes that we have currently. But once we start giving tax incentives to these businesses, and they can pull it into their PR and their marketing, what we're going to see is phase two, which is an expansion of compassion. Now, at the beginning of the year, we didn't have any numbers on how many compassion programs there were, how many patients were being served. You know, I was really surprised. I couldn't find anything. So then I started networking all these different groups and f talking to them, finding out what their numbers were. You know, there were manufacturers like Jetty that were giving away cannabis. There were dispensaries like Spark and Apothecarium and Magnolia Wellness. They were giving away cannabis. And then there were compassion groups like Weed for Warriors, Operation Evac, Sweet Leaf, and we were giving away cannabis. And so it's all these different players in the industry. And what compassion programs are, we're the nonprofit sector of the industry. We're not engaging in sales. And so looking at those numbers, you know, there was somewhere between five and 10,000 patients that I knew of that were being served by about 40 different groups from manufacturers, dispensaries, compassion projects. Now, what I want to see is I want to see hundreds of thousands of people receiving free cannabis. If you're low income and you can't afford this, you should get it for free. And the people who should be paying for that 
are the consumers. You know, we should pass that cost on. And in this industry, we're dealing with the highest level of consciousness of a consumer, of any consumer in the history of capitalism, of any industry. Now, this is an industry where I believe people will get behind that. I believe people will support it. I believe this is what people want. They just need to be given the option. And we need to create the pathway to that for the nonprofit sector and for the corporations that do, you know, do care because they are out there. I've been talking to them, but the issue is, is that right now they don't want to pay taxes just so that they can take a hit on giving away products. And so we, we have the cards stacked against us and we need to handle this legislatively. I, I think is a couple of interesting things is it, it really is combining groups that historically haven't necessarily seen eye to eye in the 64 fight and, and really coming together to work together um, on uh, it has been a learning experience for me because it's very difficult for some of us to overcome that. And so I think that's a positive is I think what we're seeing is a coalescing of the group. I'll be honest with you. I think, you know, from an economic standpoint, it, it, we're really talking similar to an orphan drug here. Everyone agrees that cannabis can save lives. The problem is the, the market we're going to have, it's free, right? And, and there's no profit to be made in that. And so I actually fear, I don't know if 3-4 is going to solve much because it's still going to depend on someone donating cannabis medicinally to someone free of charge, and there's an opportunity cost for that. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to look at this in a long, and, and be realistic. I mean, how do we? Um, because as you said, this is a roadmap. I think the roadmap looks the same for corporate cannabis as it does for us, and that is lower taxes and lower regulation. Uh, that is the only way you're going to get the pricing down, the only way you're going to combat the illicit market, and the only way you're going to end up making sure that these, the, these patients have the best opportunity at getting these donations because every incremental regulation you decrease every tax dollar you decrease that means it's more affordable and that's how we get medicine in the hands of people i don't see a good answer given the overregulated market we have because i'll be honest with you you can take all of us in here all my chapter leaders out here patrick and we could give all our medicine away on our highest month each month, and we still would be like the little boy in the dam yeah. with a finger. Yeah. And so what we really need to do is create a system that it's transparent, because there's a lot of people out there saying they're doing stuff that aren't. You know, it's marketing cannabis, it's marketing compassion, yeah. not actual compassion. Yeah. And so that's one positive three fours. We're gonna stick, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna stick this into the tracker trace and, and we're gonna see what people so that's there is hope along what Joe said is maybe what we develop is such an attractive marketing effort for corporate cannabis that they really get behind it, right? Because it's something they can get behind. So if that's where they're going to put their marketing dollars, maybe that's the way we, this is successful. But I think we have to be realistic that just lowering taxes isn't going to open the gates. It's going to create a pathway. We still need to figure out how to get cars onto the freeway. And that's where I'm, what, what concerns me. So I think we all need to be realistic. Is it, is it worth it for veterans to get their medical authorization in California? Is it, are the benefits yes. worth it? Yes, because you have higher carrying limits. We just went over this, so this is a conversation we had with our lawyer. Uh, actually, Craig Washerman of Pop Brothers, some of you may know him. And uh, Mark Carrillo here, he's my partner and uh, good friend, and I think he's outside probably smoking. He doesn't want to listen to me. Um, <laughs> it, but, but, for example, we have eight and a half grams. I mean, eight and a half ounces, if you were an eight, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a medical patient. So, for example, we have chapter leaders who go to pick up a few pounds of flour. We're like, well, how do they get it from point A from point B without being illegal? Uh -huh. Well, divide by eight and a half and take that many vets with you, right? And so... People like Presto Doc, who has given us, you know, they give us 30, 40 scripts a month free to give out to these vets, has really saved a lot of these veterans from potentially criminal activity and stuff. So it is absolutely essential, mainly for the legality standpoint. Right. Yeah, you jumped ahead. I was going to say, does the panel have questions for the, each other? But I also want to open it up then for the, the audience. And it seems like we have an audience question. So let's take that. I think we have a, do we have a mic coming here for him? Yeah, one of my both sides.
Uh, no need for the audience questions. But that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. That's the work ahead. <laughs> what we just heard were... Who we just heard. We, what we heard was Cannabis, A Matter of Life and Death from the Emerald Cup 2018 panel. Cannabis panels. Really focusing on the death of the compassion use law in California. Um, for patients that need this as a matter of life and death, literally, um, I believe the 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 quote of Prozac didn't you didn't have to use the Prozac or pistol uh, yeah. in this in this uh, from from Patrick uh, Seifert of Twenty Two Too Many, which is a veterans organization uh, helping veterans get suffering veterans get cannabis, as well as Sean Kiernan from Weed for Warriors Project. Many of you are familiar with Weed for Warriors, as you should be. If you're not, uh, we will drop the link in the description of this mm -hmm. video uh, on how to get to it, as well as 22 Too Many and Sweet Leaf Collective uh, in California, Northern California, San Francisco, I believe. Mm -hmm. San Francisco. And that one, of course, is Sweet Leaf Joe, yep. who has provided... Uh, lots of, lots of, looks like Daily Dope, Daily Dope is doing his, uh, uh, heavy lifting. That's right. Uh, for the, uh. He's on board. For the good of it. That's Not right. Not for any reason in particular other than getting people medicine. That's right. Uh, in Michigan, despite their legalization for adult use, uh, with the coming tax and regulate scheme. That's right. Uh, and continued attempts to, um, disable, delay, and hinder the medical program in the great state of Michigan. So we will watch as the compassion either gets put back into cannabis in California and beyond. Yes. Or whether it continues to be consumed by capitalist cannabis and mowed over in this green rush. Well, I think what they said that, oh, shit. We're making a stink about it, and and it's making, um, making politicians look bad. You know, Governor Moonbeam looked pretty bad, not signing that bill. I and I'm pretty sure that Gavin Newsom is going to sign SB 34 and try to make this right. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. already been introduced. We will be working. Is it 34? Is the reintroduction? One of them is 34. Is the reintroduction of 829. Right. And then. Um, uh, Ellen Kampf was saying that there's another bill in there, so we'll get on the legislative stuff in the beginning of the year. We'll find out what all the right numbers are to follow. I'm going up there on February 5th to lobby the um, the Assembly uh, and the Governor um, about Alzheimer's disease, going up with the Alzheimer's Association. Um, it's not I wasn't specially invited or anything like that. I just paid 50 bucks to go. Um, you could probably do the same in your state um, about whatever special issue that um, is meaningful to you. And I, of course, I'm going to be dressed in as much green awesomeness as possible. And I'm going to have a big fat binder that you guys will be involved in the compiling of. I'll be sure to show it to you guys before I go up there. Um, but I'm going to have my big fat binder full of um, studies and information about how cannabis helps dementia. So I think it's super important for everybody to take their uh, special concern um, about cannabis and um, how it helps medicinally and sharing that with all of your elected officials. So however you can do that, whether it's phone calls or postcards or if you can drive to your uh, capital and you have that ability, then by all means, you know, go ahead and do that too. Um, but... Uh, I recognize that it's a special and awesome thing that I had the 50 bucks to be able to go uh, and that I'm able to take time off work and drive up there and I'm just super stoked that I'm able to do that and um, I'm going to let the legislators know that cannabis is great for dementia and I'm going to let everybody else from the Alzheimer's Association and the group know as well just by my physical presence. And that's not even a cannabis related no. uh, event. That's it's purely Alzheimer's all. related. That's where we have to insert ourselves, you guys. We got to find wedge our Excellent message point. into the crack. Yes. We can't be Ooh. just going to um, you know, cannabis rallies or cannabis education things and 
spread our message. Or and, cups. Right. And talk, you know, preach to the choir. We have to go like, um, like we met Doug Bench, Judge Doug Bench, who said that we need to speak to conservatives. We need to listen rather to conservatives. Listen to other people who are not on the same page as us. Hear what their concerns are and say, really don't listen at all and say, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but this is what I learned. Listen blah, blah, and blah, then blah, redirect. Blah. Yeah, listen and redirect. <laughs> so I'm basically going to do that in my little niche of thing because I know for a fact that cannabis is the right thing uh, to help with Alzheimer's and dementia. And um, it's up to me to share it. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, up in Sacramento. Well, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of uh, plenty more opportunities to go up Sacramento uh, with the, the pushing of this bill, which mm -hmm. will, pr will probably get passed, I'd say, within weeks, uh, if not the first week or two of uh, the legislative session, considering its support and the lobbying that's going to be going on for these from these groups like Weed for Warriors and uh, and 22 too many, uh, as well as others, where I found that to be quite, quite interesting that the veterans were able to lobby your just sort of, um, uh, trigger the, you know, the, the reactionary Republicans. It's like, oh, cannabis got to vote no against it. Uh, and then they had to be, lo they were lobbied by the veterans and came around to where a 90% of the California legislature agreed, uh, with this compassionate cannabis bill. Uh, and then it was, uh, vetoed by governor moonbeam who was on meet the press today which i don't know if that means he's going to try to run for president because i heard a rumor about that but not after not after veto in that bill baby uh -huh. you may have got you may have given us events but you you when you when you veto compassion when cannabis has been born out of california compassion um yeah uh -huh. sorry ain't gonna happen uh -huh. <clears throat> and um Corporate Dems are just, they're just following, they're following the, the polls, uh, with regards to cannabis and the state legalizations. It's like their train is already on board. They either have to get on the bulldozer or they're going to be dragged. And so they're on the bulldozer of cannabis legalization. Um, and we're going to see the, we're going to see on a federal level, we're going to see the, the banking issues be, uh, be, uh, alleviated in some way. We're going to see the research start to be opened up a little bit so that uh, we don't just get swag from Mississippi <laughs> yeah. uh, to research with. And um, so we'll see what happens there. Of course, we have to look at all these things that are going to go through. The States Act will probably give more leeway for this corporate cannabis uh, expansion. So we have to watch that out and make sure that these state laws that are going to be protected, uh, that are created, are created correctly, uh, that keep uh, uh, equity as well as compassion uh -huh. in, in, in the passing of these laws. Oklahoma agreed to holy cannabis oil. You mentioned earlier that Oklahoma has a really good law. Their medical cannabis law is probably one of the best in the country. Uh -huh. um, so hopefully those that's actually followed and it's doing some, it's doing quite well. I understand uh, based on news this week, uh, we have something in the roll up in the afterburn. So, uh, what do you think, guys? 2019, what are we going to see? How far are we going to get? Are we going to reschedule? Are we going to uh, see a federal um, hands-off, basically, and leave I it to the states? Are. Yeah. Right? Because this is what uh, Orange Julius Caesar promised. Uh-huh. States Act. I think that's happening. Uh, he said that early on. That was one of the things in the list that the mainstream media said, that his support of the States Act early in the year was right before... Sessions came out and did the coal memo or right after, and then uh, Sessions is gone. So let's take that for what it is. Uh, so let's see if Cory Gardner and uh, Elizabeth Warren can get the States Act through. Cannabis Sativa thinks that Cocaine Mitch won't allow it, uh, allow the States Act on the Senate side. Ah, and it's a Senate bill, Well, we bill, shall right? see. We shall see. You know, he's all on hemp, old Mitch. You know, and he's a state's rights guy, right? So, um, I don't know. I think, I think, I think we might have more, uh, wiggle room with Mitch than some Democrats, quite frankly. Other, you know, I mean, I know that, uh, Joe Kennedy and Cuomo and, and, uh, a lot of folks are, are on board now, but, um, we might have some, especially considering it's a, uh, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. That's what Tim, Buck, that's what Tim, um, not Tim Buck, uh, Tim Buck do in the chat. Uh, what um, uh, Emerald Cup Tim, 
What's his name? Holy cannabis oil? No, no. Tim. Oh, Tim Blake. Tim Blake. Uh, the leader of it. Yeah, Tim yeah, Blake. Tim Blake, yeah. Uh, he, uh, holy cannabis oil? Holy cannabis oil. Uh, it's Timothy. Um, yes, Tim Blake said it's going to be two years and it's going to be because of the money. Uh, so you're going to see the banking. You're going to see possibly movement on the tax law. Boehner thinks that. So those are the things we'll see pop first. Uh, we'll see research be loosened up and we'll see how far that goes. And we'll see lots of states popping. You're going to see New Jersey, New York, uh, possibly Pennsylvania. Uh, you're going to see um, uh, who else? Who else is going to pop? So the East Coast is going to be and then that's going to uh, North Carolina is talking about it uh, now. So you're going to see um, some states that you may be surprised to see action in uh, coming up next year. Then 2020. And then you'll see you might also see action with legislators that you may not have previously thought would be cool with it because the climate of the rest of the nation, because voters want it, and because that, it's the most popular thing. That may also sway the courts. Yeah. Because we, as we learned in the Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg story. Yes, on the basis of sex. On the basis of sex. Yeah. Um, the climate of the... Climate, not of the... Of the culture. Of the culture mm -hmm. as opposed to the... Leads the courts. The yes. climate of the cult. The, the courts are influenced by the cultural climate around them. Right. And um, you know, January might be a big surprise for all of us. You just don't know. The federal cannabis lawsuit is trying to make it so that cannabis is taken off the Schedule One of drugs. There's also legislation proposed to take it off the schedule one of drugs that's right 2019 is that's a right. very exciting which is exciting year which is going to get heard uh based on the rules committee chairman yeah. saying they're going to debate it and now he co-sponsors that bill so we better we'd like to we should write to him <laughs> uh, and tell him mcgovern yeah. i think it's mcgovern right daily dope is saying boehner will drink some southern comfort and do a couple bumps with oh. cocaine mitts and he'll come around is it, is it, is it, is it a ten dollar bill is it you see in the back of this ten dollar bill that's that's George Washington standing in a field of hemp. <laughs> you know, you know, every state had to grow. I, I'm all in on cannabis. Now is the time to be all in on cannabis. So yeah, Boehner's on board. Mitchell get on board. Uh, he likes the hemp. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make some tobaccos going down. So we're gonna find something else. Be Did you know that Europe allows one percent THC in their hemp cigarettes? One whole percent. Yeah, one whole percent. My dad should definitely be using that. Cannabis light in the European Union. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Like 25% CBD um, cigarettes, or, mm -hmm. you know, hemp mm -hmm. cigarettes with 1% uh, THC. So tobacco, that's what uh, big tobacco is. Everybody, all the industries that are going to be, that are affected by cannabis are now putting money in, are pouring money into Canada, mm -hmm. and they're going to want to pour money into the U.S., these the more of these companies are going to want an opportunity to list and they can't list until the shit gets straightened out with the banks so that's gonna happen it's gonna happen in the first corner of 2019 and it's all gonna continue to explode another mm -hmm. banner year they're talking and did 10 the cannabis business did 10 billion dollars last year mm -hmm. uh reported in the legal industry i guess a reported industry um and uh they expect that to almost double next year um if we see significant movement with regards to banking taxes and um just generally lightening up of the industry you're going to see that probably that number be larger uh there i know uh -huh. there's this big 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 conversation that california didn't eh, california didn't get didn't know what's not all it's cracked up to me that cannabis money it didn't get all you wanted it's like ah, geez take, take a breath everybody take a breath everybody it's coming LA, city of LA only has 140 legal stores open and there's 600 applications on the desk. Ma uh, Massachusetts is about to open five stores, five to eight, or the four to eight stores a month, uh, starting very soon. They've got, they've got the rhythm down and they're going to start opening f average of five stores a month, uh, starting in 2019. So you're going to see the East Coast explode. Uh, the West Coast is going to get uh, stranger and stranger as they, uh, we try to adapt these rules, hang on to compassion. That's our goal for this show of Reefer Revolution Live uh -huh. is to bring compassion back to cannabis. 
Yeah, officially. Officially, yes. With So that the people participating in the compassion program, the growers... Don't get screwed. get screwed by and get doing put in it. jail yeah. and uh, be driven out of the business. Yeah. They uh, one of the fun, uh, I don't know if it was in the clip that we showed, but on that panel was the information that um, uh, that I didn't remember or didn't know that in Prop sixty four, the law was they had a year to come up with a nonprofit report about how nonprofit cannabis worked in California, which was basically the collective system, and. The legislation delayed it a year. So now the report isn't due until 2020. 2020. And it's a year after the collective system, nonprofit system, has been dead for a year. So they, they go away on January 9th, legally. Every collective becomes an illegal operation on January 9th. Every nonprofit operation that was legal in the state of California that brought Free cannabis to patients, to people that needed it. That couldn't afford or it. wanted it or couldn't afford it. Uh-huh. Which is really, that's all about. We had a, we, we met a, uh, head of a cannabis company that said, uh, what do you mean? It's no access. You can walk into any store in California and right. 21 years old and buy cannabis. No problem. No problem. You can have it delivered to your door. Yeah. If you have a door. If you have money. And money. No big deal. Sure, if you got money, it's you got a no credit card deal. and uh, or or cash. No, no cash. Well, mostly yeah. cash. Delivery is credit card. Oh, and cash. I think. Ease, I think. I think ease is credit card. Credit card. So there are some banks, small banks, credit hmm. credit unions. That was screwed. That was the other big crappy news in California this week. Uh, is that the report came out that um, oh no, public bank for cannabis is not a good idea. Well, of course not, because it's federally legal. I didn't need a report to tell me that. It's basically what they said. Oh, you know, you can arrest everybody at the works for the bank. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that information. We kind of knew that was true. So banking lo- banking rules are going to change. Yeah. Uh, we can't mm-hmm. handle, we can't handle uh, every week, literally, it's true. Every week, some dispensary or somebody, some business says, somebody broke through my wall again this week because they're trying to get the cash that they know is in there. And the cannabis. But um, mm-hmm. they're looking for cash um, because there's a lot of cash floating around out there. And um, so that's going to change early in 2019. And we're going to bring it to you. So subscribe, get notifications, and ring that bell for when we go live. This is the last show of 2018. That's right. And uh, we were uh, literally hijacked by that amazing panel uh, from the Emerald Cup. Some just killer information Such came out great of the information. Cup this year. You and guys should all go over to the Emerald Cup channel and watch all of those panels. They're, they're so good. They're all in a playlist. Mm-hmm. Uh, we drop, I'll drop the link in the description mm-hmm. and watch every panel that they come and they're just going to, they keep dropping them now. So all of the panels will eventually be up there. I'm sure they're going to, I'm hoping they put up all of the growing panels up as well. That would be really some great. Point because those were really amazing. But we didn't get to any. We saw one. And that was just blew my mind. I learned that I have to plant chives with my, if I plant chives with my cannabis plant, the bugs will uh, be diverted. (laughs) So it's one of the things I learned. That's right. Uh, So um, great stuff came out of the Emerald Cup 2018. More videos to come from us. Mm -hmm. uh, Putting together some uh, more videos that we shot while we were up there. And uh, met a lot of people to plan our 2019 season. So there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of, of uh, flowers we will be harvesting yes. uh, from the seeds that we planted at the Emerald Cup. We did not get any seeds, however. No, next year. We kind of, we'll we, get seeds. we sort of wanted to get some seeds to do our experiment. Yeah, but really, uh, but I we didn't end up with any. It, it was the, so overwhelming. I so think much going on. The leader of um, the winner of the cup, I believe it was, um, I forget the name of it. Uh, and then I forget well, one of them anyway. It was one of the winners, one of the first place. It was either the outdoor, or personal, or indoor, or compliant, or I don't know what it was. But the packet of seeds was two hundred dollars for a packet of seeds, and I don't know how many seeds were in there. But it's like, ah, oh, do I want to spend two hundred dollars on some seeds, or do I want to plant the ones that were given to me by some uh, can of can of can of can of pirate spreading <laughs> spreading seeds, spreading cannabis can of seeds. Pirates. Setting speed, spreading seeds to the population throughout uh, California. They just show up and they drop off some seeds in your pocket and say, hey, go plant this cannabis. Uh, but uh, we're going to plant something and we're going to grow something in 2019 and we'll put a camera on it so you can watch it every week. 
because uh, we do this show every week on Sundays at 420 Pacific. So subscribe, get notifications, uh, and do whatever you do on whatever platform you're watching. We're on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, DLive, and WeTV, the Cannabis Media Network. So do whatever you do there. Like, thumbs up, share, uh, and engage with us on YouTube. We got lots of folks in. Daily Dope Show in the house. Real Jingies in there. Uh, Holy Cannabis Oil. Alexis was in there earlier. RBU83145. Mm -hmm. Awake A. Welcome to the show. JCC. Jane joined recently. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the show. Exhausted Thanks for jumping 11. in. Exhausted 11. 11 is going in. Did you in. mention Holy the, Cannabis Oil? I, I did. Oh, I did. Sarah. It's getting tough. The chats, are getting, the chats are getting better and better and bigger and bigger. Yes, yes. I love it. We love it. Share the show. Let people know about it. We, we love to bring um, our take, our toke, our full spectrum analysis. I like that. Of the cannabis culture and marijuana full. news. Full spectrum analysis. A full spectrum analysis of uh, cannabis across North America and the world, uh, because there's a uh, lots of news coming out of the world uh, this week and the, and the end of the year. They just crank, they just pumped them all in there. Uh, Thailand, Israel, uh, uh, South Africa is like, oh, hoo -hoo, we're gonna have a giant, giant medical cannabis export industry. And Malawi, Malawi today. Don't forget about Malawi. Malawi is like, whoa. Malawi will not be forgotten. We can probably go some good cannabis down here in Malawi. I don't know if that's a Malawi accent. I'm pretty sure that's not a Malawi accent. Probably not. Anyway, go on. <laughs> you were saying the world's I don't amazing. know. I don't know what I was saying. I'm super high. Are you moving into the world? I think are we're, you going to play some video? I think we're moving into the afterburn. We are. Aren't Guys, we? thank you so much for joining us for the main part of the show. That and was the big content. The big, uh, if for, for as big as our content gets, and That was big content all before that, and now it's now it's all like the background. That's right. And now Oscar, it's like the background. Oscar's the dropping in. He's Jackpot so has cute. not stirred. My dog from the uh, from the chair. My dog is so adorable. And uh, the Come here, you. the split personality. We should call him Split. Come here, because he's, he's got so about cute. five, three or four different personalities. He's so cute. Uh, Which one, Jackpot? No, no, Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Doesn't he? He really does. Oh. We're all gonna need yellow vests. Yeah, that's green. That I show. like the green vests. Let's do green vests. The yellow vest, babe. That's the yellow vest. Yeah, that's France. Uh, France. It's France. Isn't they, it? That's like it's infecting America. Because oh, yeah, it's, it's progressives in Cali progressives in America can, Guys, do, can do nothing but co-op. Just tell us when to show all, up. All we do, all they do is co-op shit. That's it. You That's guys, it. our only issue is cannabis. It's That's true. That's all we think about. That's all that matters. Although that I did, is our focus. I did. I, I did have to. I did have to retweet something today. Oh, you're kidding. No, that I found uh, interesting. Um, it's a Venn diagram, and you know I love Venn diagrams. Yeah. It's like the Democrats right, cool. and Republican Venn diagram, and it says. Where they cross. Total support for Israel. Do Wall Street's bidding. Unlimited military spending. Hostility to Russia, Iran, and China. Full spectrum dominance. Speaking of full spectrum. Full spectrum. Let money rule politics. Neoliberalism rocks. Spy on everyone. Screw the poor and old. Oligarchy and not democracy. View, view, vive U.S. imperialism. Uh, outlaw third parties. Crush the left. Regime change is cool. That's where they all integrate. And then on the le Democrats, it's and some stuff about abortion, pro-choice. <laughs> Acknowledgement of climate change would do nothing about it. And then on the Republican side, it's ah, some stuff about pro-life and guns and deny climate change. Uh, I'm like, yeah. And my that's, whole thing is cannabis That's like exactly tomatoes. right. And you notice cannabis is not in the middle of that Venn diagram. And it should be because that is actually the one issue that crosses all party lines and brings people together as opposed to all that stuff that literally divides people. True story, guys. Everything on that list is a divisive is divisive and something they want you to resist and be or support upset about. and be upset about yeah and be and, and be afraid of or angry it's not cannabis Can that's why cannabis wasn't on that list cannabis brings mm. people together it crosses every party non-party and it makes people happy it's true it makes people happy and it heals people it's true so and it heals you for everything every it literally it literally goes to everything it's an adaptogen it goes to those CB receptors, those cannabinoid receptors. Because what do you need, baby? What do you need? You need a little of this. Balances other you need things. Need a little of that. You need a little protectant there. Balances this. What's that's my word of the year? Which homeostasis. Ah, uh, yes, homeostasis. Homeostasis is my word of 2018. Cool. Uh, which is what the cannabinoids do: is put our 
put our body into a state of homeostasis and help us get back to where we should be, which is joy and happiness and wellness. Yes, and flow and ease. Ease and flow and... We all have high (sighs) hopes for a revolutionary year ahead. I'm sorry. What did you say? What? When? Repeat that. I have high hopes for a revolutionary year ahead. That's lovely. That should be on a card. Uh, I put it on a lot of cards. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> hey, did you want to play some videos? Oh, it's time. Sure. Yes, let's get into it, We're shall we? Play some videos Where would you like to start? Let's the start world. national. World. world and national.